and welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about how to organize your language learning. In this video, we're going to look at how to take language learning notes, how to organize your notebook, how to organize your time, how to create notes digitally instead of on paper for language learning, and a few other things. Let's start with the most basic, which is having a language notebook. Should you have one notebook for each language or should you have one notebook for everything you do? I suggest having separate notebooks for every language. And if you use a multitude of resources, I suggest having one notebook per textbook you use or per tutor you talk with, for instance. This is completely up to you uh, as to how detailed you wanna go in the organization of your notebooks, but it just helps me I remember things a bit better if I have one notebook per language instead of one notebook for all of the languages combined. So let's look a bit at how I actually take notes and structure my notebook. So let's look at some examples of how I take notes. Here's a Hungarian notebook from a while ago. And I wanna show you examples apart from the messy pages where I've just chucked some things down examples of a more structured way of taking notes. On this page, I've only used two colors. For the verb conjugations in Hungarian, I put the, um, I put every tense in a different block, present, past, imperative, and future, and the Hungarian is in black and the English is written in red. The English in green, Hungarian in black. Any explanations and notes I've written in blue, like little, things to remember. I don't actually know why I added pink here, but it stands out for extra important notes. So you can decide if you want to use two colors, four colors, or just one. And it's really up to you how you decide to organize your notes. This is an old Japanese book of mine. Here I was working through an article, so I wrote down the things in an article, that, like the content of the article, and then on the side, I wrote the new vocabulary words and their meanings and pronunciations. As I progressed in learning Japanese, I used less colors and less English. So in my notes on this page, you will not see any English being used for explanations, except where I'm saying whether it's humble or honorific, but I try to keep everything in Japanese as much as I can. Now let's look at how I took Chinese notes from an article. Do Chinese is an app that I use to read in Mandarin Chinese. So if I'm struggling with the tones, I will indicate the tone marks above the characters here. My explanation of the sentence is in Korean. I write down the pronunciation if I'm struggling. And these are the sentences that I've read. And over here in this little note that I've drawn are the new vocabulary words and their meanings. I do like to have a section where I repeat writing the sentence over and over, especially if I'm learning a language like Mandarin Chinese with new characters that I have to learn. I want to practice the stroke order as much as possible, so sometimes you will see me repeating the same sentence over and over. Something that I did try over here was to do my daily study plan. This is in the beginning of my notebook to remind me what I need to do every day when I study Chinese. I obviously didn't stick with that because life happens, but this is indeed something that you can try if you do want to have your plan be in your notebook and encourage and motivate you to keep learning. A question I often get is, do I review my vocabulary? Yes, I do like to go through my notes about two or three times, highlighting any words that I may have forgotten. Here is how I planned my time when I was taking the Korean exam. I worked out how many chapters I needed to do uh, before the exam date. I wrote down all the grammar points and then I color coded them into the ones I know, I don't know, and I need to review. You can see the colored dots means I have finished them and then the open dots means I still need to do them. I then did a day schedule to say how many minutes to study each day and then checked if I did do that every day. 
If you are more interested in taking digital notes instead of using pen and paper, I would love to recommend a really cool note-taking app for you. It is called Scrintle. Scrintle has a system of cards that you can create in a board, which you can link to each other to connect ideas. You can also add images, video, audio, you can highlight things. So let me show you how I use Scrintle to organize my Hungarian and Japanese learning. On a note component, I have my Japanese study plan for the week. Then I post my articles that I'm reading. So I'll just put the whole article in Scrintle and I'll use the highlight tool to post any new words that I don't know. I'll then look it up and create a vocab list on another note. Any words that I already know, I'll just cross out. I also tag my content with hashtags like hashtag Japanese, hashtag vocabulary. As for Hungarian, I color code my content, pink for lesson notes, and then blue for other personal learning. Again, here I've posted an article that I'm highlighting, any new phrases. I then go into ChatGPT and ask for example sentences based on the new vocabulary. And then I post the example sentences in my vocabulary note on Scrintle. I then tag it for hashtag vocab and hashtag Hungarian as well. Another cool thing I can do is actually share my work with my Hungarian tutor to ask him if the things I've done are correct or to ask him to check things. Scrintle also lets you add images. So in my main vocab card for my lessons, I'll add images related to the vocab words that I'm learning, and it's all in one spot in my lesson vocab card. These I've connected to my weekly study plan. So you can see that all things are interlinked. Any links that I put on my study plan are also connected in the bottom of my study plan card. Another cool feature is a Kanban board. So for my Japanese learning, if I have activities that I need to do, like a lesson on an app, I can move it into the doing column or move it into the done column to track my learning for the week. My study plan note is color coded pink and then study materials and vocab that I do in the week are in blue. So Scrintle is like a really nice visual way that I can categorize all of my language learning on separate boards for each language. I encourage you to try Scrintle. You can get 10% off a personal pro Scrintle plan if you use my code LINDY10. And this code is only valid for four weeks from the date of publishing this video. I have tried to do some language learning on my iPad. So I paste the link of the article I'm reading here and then any new vocabulary I will write here. And then I still need to add the meanings. And if the article I'm reading like from brunch over here has any images that remind me of the article. I put the images in there just to make it fun for me. So this article is about new jeans, um, the, the logo of new jeans that they have like over 30 logos. So it's like a graphic design article about why new jeans has so many logos. So what I enjoy is I have my article notes here and I can really just easily swipe to look at the actual article I am reading about logo design in Korean. So I've got everything here digitally and you obviously don't need an iPad for this. It's just nice for me to be able to switch between my apps and take my notes kind of in context. Part of organizing your language learning is also organizing what you do in your day, in your free time. So you don't just need to be like study, study, studying the whole time, but something you do in your leisure time, like reading, you can always include that in your plan for the day. So I like to do at least 30 to 45 minutes of reading every day. I recently got more interested in fiction, so I read in Afrikaans, English, French and Korean and Japanese. Those are the languages I'm most comfortable reading um, fiction in. This is nonfiction. This is a book I got in Japan about like <laughs> tips for the working women. It's like just a super cute book about like tips for working. So reading a book that is related to a topic you're interested in is really great. So obviously I want to succeed in my career and this book is keeping me interested. So I can integrate reading in another language as a passive way to improve my language skills. Um, I'm also a Christian, so I read the Bible in Japanese. This is just the New Testament in Japanese. Well, it's got English on the left and then um, Japanese on the right. So I just take notes directly in it and everything is falling. If I've got a verse I want to like memorize in English, I'll also highlight the Japanese version. And then this is also a form of 
how I incorporate language learning into my day in a way that is not just directly studying. May I suggest also incorporating a habit tracker into your day? This of course can help you track habits outside of language learning, but it can also help you build consistency. So I have a habit tracker for pretty much everything I need to do in the day because I forget things and I'm always tired and I just need to have that feeling of accomplishment. But you can do it if you have daily repeating tasks in your language learning. One thing for me is I have quite a few language learning apps and I like them all and I want to build a consistent habit. So in my habit tracker, I actually write down the names of the apps that I want to use every day. And then I just tick them off for each day of the month so that I can see which apps do I naturally gravitate to or to build a better habit. It's kind of like having a streak, but for myself made by me. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any suggestions on how to organize language learning in general. And please remember to subscribe if you wanna see more language learning videos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.